I offer with my full trust and my full love. And I believe you will bless me more so I can give more. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello dear friends and blessed day sa ating lahat si Brother Tony Valenzuela muli po ito of the Feast Bay Area 1.30 p.m. Taglish session sa PICC tuwing Sunday. Dear friends, I hope and pray that you are continually blessed and anointed and embraced by our powerful series by God's Love Special Delivery. God will rescue you. Yan. And this is, kumbaga, parang Bible study natin ito no? on the book of Exodus. At ang Exodus ay pangalong libro sa buong Bible and the second book as well of the first five books na ang tawag dito ay Torah no? sa salitang Hebreo. Pero sa salitang Griego, it's called Pentateuch. No? And I pray you experience God's Exodus for you from your past to your present and to your future as God has planned and designed for you. Ito na, talk for na tayo. And our talk for one big message is God will always provide mercy. Yes? Can you put your hand over your chest and say to me, God will always provide mercy. No? Sa talk three, nakita natin at napag-usapan natin yung powerful earth-shaking encounter ni Moises with Yahweh and their explosive conversation together. Pero tandaan natin ha, si Yahweh, ang Panginoon mismo, ang unang nagtawag kay Moises by name. He called Moses by name and gave him his unique and special holy mission to liberate no uh, the Israelites, yung bayang Israel from Egypt. Pero tandaan din natin that Moses in his self-absorbed and self-centered mentality he doubted himself and focused on himself no na siya lamang ay instrumento siya lang ay vessel at siya lamang ay pamamaraan kung paano niligtas ang Panginoon ni Yahweh ang ang kanyang bayang Israel and God is calling us also by name and God can also use us uniquely wholly set apart for his purpose for his mission not ours. Amen? But before we begin our talk and our message, God's message for us today, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, together we pray with conviction. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Dear friends, let's pray and sing and serenade to His Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Dear friends, as we read God's Word, I pray that you dive deeper and experience an exodus as the Israelites of ancient biblical history have also experienced the exodus. Ito na. The divine meeting has happened between Moses and the Lord. Ang Panginoon at si Moises talagang face to face. And Moses is called and sent out by God to go into Egypt and face Pharaoh. Ngayon, face to face. And to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Ito na. Ito ang encounter niya as we read from Exodus chapter 5 verse 2. And the king of Egypt said, si Pharaoh, no? Si Pharaoh, sabi niya, and who is the Lord? Sino ba tong binabanggit mong Yahweh, no? Who sino tong Panginoon? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. Wow. No? Parang tigas ng puso ng, at, at, at isip ni, ni Pharaoh. He was hardened. Pero in essence, ang sinasabi ni Pharaoh, no? Ang sinasabi niya, his name means nothing to me. Yahweh, sino yan? Di ko kilala yan. Ano yan? Kinakain ba yan? Bagay ba to? Diba? How could he regard God 
in this way. Kung tayo, syempre, we know and believe that Yahweh is God. But konting context, ha? Kasi yung mga ancient Egyptians, mga pagan sila, mga pagano, they're pagans, and they worship their pharaohs as gods. Kung baka, ang perception ng mga mga Egyptians sa uh, kanilang mga kings and pharaohs ay mga just diyos din, no? So, to pharaoh, ang tingin niya sa sarili niya ay equal footing with Yahweh. Since siya ay isang Diyos, ang tingin niya sa Diyos ng mga Israelita ay isa din mga Diyos dyan, di ba? Yung mga na, siguro ang tingin niya kay Yahweh sa mga Diyos ay nandyan lang sa tabi-tabi, di ba? And he refused God's authority over him, over Egypt, over Israel, and over the world. In his mind, equal footing, face-to-face, head-on siya against the God of Israel, si Yahweh. Pero dear friends, hindi ba kaya na ganito din tayo? Di ba may mga araw, there are days where it's easier to follow God, to trust God, di ba? Especially when we're in a good mood, pag everything is smooth sailing, di ba maayos ang lahat. Pero, di ba, to experience, experience, may mga days, may mga araw, may mga certain times na nilalabanan natin si Lord. We're on an all-out war with God's will in our lives. Kung mag-aantingin natin sa will ni Lord is against our will. Pinipilit natin yung sarili natin sa Diyos. Hindi ba ito nangyayari din sa buhay natin? Hindi ba ito kagaya ng ginagawa ni Pharaoh ngayon? That he is going against the authority of God over everything? Hindi ba minsan our self-will is at war with God's will? Minsan ang hir- yan ang pinakamahirap na dasal na pwede nating sabihin. Thy will be done. Pero nasa Our Father po yan. Binadasal at binabanggit natin yan every time we pray to Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pero whenever we let our own desires win, whenever we choose to decide for ourselves what's right and wrong, that's when we take things into our hands and things into our matters. And we're telling God that tayo ang Diyos sa buhay natin. Kumbaga, ako ang Diyos whenever we make that decision to follow our own desires and choose for ourselves what's right and wrong rather than surrendering it to God and lifting it up to Him and allowing God to make the decision at the end. Pero ito, konting truth talk ulit tayo, dear friends. No? At the end of the day, kahit anong decision mo sa buhay, kapatid, kaibigan, God still respects even your wrong decisions. Yes, why? Why does God still respect your wrong decisions? Because God is in control of everything. God is control in control of everything in the world, in the universe, except for one thing. Ano yun? Ang free will natin. Ang freedom natin. So even when we make our own wrong decisions, we make our own mistakes, we choose our favorite sin, paulit-ulit, He still allows us to do so because... He cannot go against himself. God created us with free will. So if we insist to live our life in our own terms, He'll allow us. Hayaan tayo ni Lord. Pero sa totoo lang, hindi tayo pinapabayaan ni Lord. Yan. Pero nakakatakot pong isipin, no? That we can choose our own decision and there are consequences. May consequences talaga. But God will let those bad consequences happen because of our wrong decisions. In fact, ganun din nga ang ginawa ni Pharaoh and the biblical authors of Exodus are making another connection here. Ang, ang connection nila, si Pharaoh, ay parang yung ahas sa Genesis. Because the snake would not acknowledge God as true God. And in fact, he tempted Adam and Eve to make themselves God by deciding for themselves what's wrong and what's right. That's why kinain nila yung forbidden fruit of the Garden of Eden. And God has now promised that he will crush the head of the snake, and he will crush Pharaoh's pride and kingdom. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh was proving, wanting to prove na mas, mas malakas siya, mas makapangyarihan siya, mas Diyos siya kaysa kay Yahweh. By multiplying the suffering of the Israelites, yan, ito na, na, he punished the Israelites by withdrawing yung mga straw, yung straw na ginagamit mga Israelites para gumawa sila ng mga bricks, kailangan nila ng straw eh. But Pharaoh now is not providing the natural straw that they need. At ang utos niya is gawa sila ng brick without straw. 
and twice the produce. Ay, grabe ng, ng suffering na ito sa Israelita. And syempre, the Israelite nation were now suffering so much. Kumbaga, nasa, nasa huling, huling uh, breath na nila ang, ang, ang suffering na ito and they couldn't help but cry out to God, cry out to Yahweh as if it was a death sentence in their doorstep. So the slaves, the Israelite slaves, had no recourse but to cry out to God. And God, syempre, faithful as He is, sent Moses. No? Pero in this story, the Exodus author, no? yung nagsulat ng Exodus, shows a contrast, a difference between two gods, Yahweh and Pharaoh. And today, we have again four powerful messages from our Exodus story. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. All right. Message number one. God is a giver. God is a giver. Daily, no? Yung mga Israelita nung yung nasa Exodus sila, they were in the desert for 40 years. Pero there was not a single day na wala silang pagkain. Ano yung pagkain? Yung mana. Sa umaga, may parang flakes of bread. At sa gabi, may quail. Oh, di ba? Parang may, may talagang may pagkain sila. Every day. Imagine, ha? Every day for 40 years, yan ang kinakain mo. And di, feeling mo, magsas- nagsasawa ka na, di ba? Magsasawa talaga sila. That's why there is also a time that they complained to God. But the truth here is that Yahweh, God supplies their daily needs and God will also supply your daily need. Ang tanong ko lang sa inyo, mga kapatid, who is your God? If you serve the God of greed, God of lust, God of pride, like Pharaoh, kagaya ni Pharaoh, these things will eat up your life because they are not gods. And these monster gods no, will consume your joy. They will consume your peace. They will eat up your relationships and even your health. If you look up to greed, lust, pride, envy, jealousy, yung pagsaselos, di ba? Yung, yung, yung uh, anger, yung bursts of, uh, of wrath, yan. Nako, pag yan ang naging diyos natin, no, it will eat us alive. So these things also ate up Pharaoh. Serve God instead, dear friends. Serve God. Put your hand over your chest and say, I will serve God instead. Dear friends, kasi ginawa tayo ng Diyos na talagang kailangan may magahare sa puso natin. So who is the king of your heart today? Who is the king of your life? And I pray it is Yahweh. It is the God who provides. Basahin natin sa Matthew 6.26. Look at the birds. Sabi ni Jesus to, ha? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. Dear friends, do you have needs right now? Do you have needs na kailangan is, uh, bigyan ng solusyon, bigyan ng sagot? Needs that need to be fed. Dear friends, God is a giver. And God is a generous God. Lapitan natin siya. And He has given us this world, this universe, to receive everything that God splurges and lavishes on us with His love. Declare today, God is a giver and God is my great provider. Amen? Second message ngayon, God allows problems to change us. Yes, God allows problems to change us. At makita natin dito sa Exodus 6, 6-7. I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my people, my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from oppression in Egypt. Not only has Yahweh named His name sa buong bayan niyang Israel, but He also tied His name to their rescue. Hindi lang Diyos, hindi siya lang Diyos, hindi lang siya Yahweh, but He is the Yahweh who provides, He is the Yahweh who rescues, He is the Yahweh who will bring them to the promised land. And after Moses told Pharaoh na to set his nation of Israel free, anong ginawa ni Pharaoh? Siyempre, sa tigas ng puso at, at, at <laughs> isip ni Pharaoh, no, yan ang sagot niya. He rejects God. So what does God do? Siyempre, kailangan may, may gagawin si, si Lord, ang, si, ang Panginoon, si Yahweh. What does He do? He sends the ten plagues. At alam natin itong kwento na to, especially sa mga nanood na ng ten commandments. We know the ten plagues. And the first nine plagues are blood, frogs, gnats, 
flies, livestock dies, mga boils, hail, no? locusts, and darkness in the last dial. Sobrang hardened of heart na si Pharaoh. The last was the death of the firstborn. Pero ito, we will learn today that God, kahit may mga punishment siya, this punishment, sa tingin kasi ng mga tao, punishment ito eh. Dahil sa decision ni Pharaoh at decision ng mga Egyptians. But sa totoo lang, dear friends, God does not want anyone to suffer. God does not want us to suffer. In fact, God is committed to our flourishing as we learned in talk one. But to produce a harvest and a soil that has to be tilled. Diba? We are meant to become flourishing. We are meant to grow. And that's what God wants us. God's best plowing in our lives is when He uses our problems. At kadalas ang mga problema natin ay gawa natin. Tayo nag inflict ng sarili natin problema. But even in our problems, God will use that for our good if we allow Him to. If we surrender it to Him now. Dear friends, may mga problema ka ba? May problema ka ba sa buhay mo ngayon? May problema ka ng pinagdadaanan ngayon? It's not too late. Surrender it to God. Allow Him to use that problem so that He can bless you in return. In fact, Diba? Yan ang mga biggest blessings when we surrender our problems kasi may mga blessings in disguise of our problems. So dear friends, I pray that you become a different person, allowed to be transformed by God every moment, even through your problems. Now, message number three, ito na. God can hasten the bad consequences of your choices. Wow! Kakaiba to, ha? And ito, i-connect ko, ha, sa mga seemingly judgment and punishment ni Lord sa ten plagues over the land of Egypt. Kasi ito ang truth, ha? dear friends. Sometimes, ang mga sa tingin natin ay punishment ni Lord is actually His act of mercy. Yes. Insan, God will allow the punishment to come in early in our lives para makita natin yung kamalian ng mga gawa natin so that we can see the consequences in advance and change deliberately by our choice and intentionally change our evil and sinful ways before it gets too late. Pero iba ang nangyari kay Pharaoh. We read from Exodus 7 verse 3, But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Parang kakaiba to, ah. It sounds absurd. How could God make someone like Pharaoh disobey him? Nangyari ba ito? Diba God's calling is for us to obey him? Pero sinadya ba ni Lord na maging disobedient at maging yung tegas ang puso ni Pharaoh sa, sa instruction ni Yahweh? Doesn't make sense. Pero again, ha? We will now dive deeper sa ten plagues. Alam niyo tung ten plagues na to? It's not just an enumeration. Makita natin yung character ni Lord, yung character ni Yahweh dito sa ten plagues. So I pray that you dive in deeper and let's study. Eto ha, kasi yung mga Exodus writers, nung sinulat nila yung mga ten plagues, makita mo, when you read it, there's a difference dun sa mga sinulat nila. No? Sa first five plagues, from plagues one, two, three, four, five, Ang nakasulat, Pharaoh hardened his heart. So ibig sabihin, for the first five plagues na dinala ng Diyos to seemingly punish the Egyptians, si Pharaoh mismo nag-decide na i-reject niya si Yahweh as God. Naging proud si Pharaoh. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede na matatalo ako dyan sa Yahweh na yan na ngayon ko lang kilala. Diyos ba yan? Diba? Sometimes we look at God that way. Totoo bang Diyos? Totoo ba may narinig ba at may nakikinig sa aking dasal? Totoo ba may Diyos na mabait, all-knowing, all-loving, and all-omnipotent? May ganun po bang Diyos? Diba? Sometimes we question God. But Pharaoh took it further. After the five plagues, eto na. Mababasa natin from plague 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart na. Bakit? What's the point? God gave Pharaoh five opportunities to change his mind. Na magbago ang isip at puso niya. At, luma, at pwedeng na maging malapit ang puso niya para sa mga Israelite slaves. Pero Pharaoh reached a point of no return. 
Kumbaga, paulit-ulit niyang na-reject si Lord. Wala na. Wala nang balikan. Wala nang point of no return. God has to allow now the consequences of Pharaoh's decisions to happen. Again, ha? Tandaan natin, God respects our wrong decisions. Think about it. Nakakatakot talaga that our choices are actually very dangerous. Why? Because we have free will. And this freedom, God cannot go against. Because to go against our freedom and free will, will go against God nature. Kasi ginawa tayo ng Diyos na may free will. Kahit limitado ang buhay natin. Pero if we look at the ten plagues, para siyang big connection ito. Ha? It's a decreation of God's creation sa Genesis. Yes, yes. Each plague is not just a random bad thing na, okay, ganito, ganon, ganon. May, may purpose talaga si Lord. May purpose kung bakit may suffering, may consequence. Of course, God doesn't want us to suffer. Pero even in the suffering and seeming punishment that we experience, God has a purpose for that. He will use that to bring out the best in us, the better in us. So each plague is not just a random bad thing, but an act of recreation. Makita natin yan. Here we go. And tandaan natin, in these plagues, Pharaoh was rejecting God. And if we reject God, chaos re-enters our life. Okay? Makita natin yung, dip, yung, yung breakdown ng, ng ating uh, ng plagues, no? Let's see. The first triad, blood, frogs, gnats. Second triad, flies, disease, boils. Third triad, Hail, locust, darkness, and the finale. Ito talaga ang pinakamatinding lahat sa lahat. Final plague is death of the firstborn. No? God, through these plagues, is revealing who He is. And He says, ito ha, sinabi niya kay Moises at kay Pharaoh mas lalo. He said seven times, at kung babasahin natin, you will know that I am Yahweh. Seven times. Seven times niya binanggit, you will know that I am Yahweh. Bakit seven times? Kasi ayon sa mga biblical writers and, and authors, pag may, may bagay na binanggit na seven times, it's a perfect number. The number seven symbolizes completion. And this already tells that God's character is complete. Ito ha. They're not about punishment again. Ito mga ten plagues. It's already revealing to us what God has been trying to do for us from the very beginning ng Genesis. Ito, let's dive now into the plagues. Plague number one, let's unravel, unpack the deep symbols and connections of the plagues. Plague number one, Nile River turns to blood. Oh, alam nyo, before this happened, ano nangyari dati nung nag-utos si Pharaoh na patayin yung mga, mga sanggol at mga bata ng mga Hebrews kasi natatakot ni si Pharaoh at mga Egyptians na lumalaki, dumadami uh, ang nation ng Israel at tatatakot sila, baka sasakupin na sila ng mga Israelita. So they decided to kill all the firstborn and the Hebrew children nung sanggol pa si Moises. Di ba nakatakas si Moises? Moses was a child at that time. And he was saved because of his mother and the compassion of the princess ni Pharaoh at that time. So may connection uli. Ang first plague was the Nile River turning into blood. Bakit? Kasi ang mga Egyptians, again, ancient Egypt was a pagan nation. Diba? Dami lang Diyos, Diyosan. And they believed that the Nile River was a god and that Pharaoh was a god who could control the Nile River. So that's why now God was showing already that he is all first of all in control of everything plague 1 yun ah plague 2 infestation of frogs at anong connection na ito sa genesis ito di ba sa genesis god separated the waters from the land okay pero ang mga frogs anong mga frogs mga amphibians they can live pwede silang uh, mag uh, nag uh, 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 magstay sa too big at pwedeng sa lupa, on water and on land. So yung infestation of frogs was a symbol that God was bringing chaos back into Egypt. Bringing water and land back together in the frogs. Again, dear friends, tanda natin, if we reject God, chaos re-enters our life. Ayun, yan ang symbolism ng frogs. Plague number three. The swarm of gnats. Ano itong gnats na to? Si Natalie? Si Nat Nat na to? Hindi. Mga gnats, para silang mga, uh, mga maliit na hayop yung mga insekto. Parang mga, uh, mga lamok. And they represent dust. And what does dust represent? Death. The shortness of life. Diba? Connect natin to sa Genesis. Ginawat ni, ni Lord ang Panginoon 
si Adam at Eva out of the dust, out of the land, and breathe life into them. So ang mga gnats, they represent dust, and dust represents death. So because of the swarm of gnats, he was telling that when you reject God, you reject life. When you reject God, you reject the source of life. When you reject God, you welcome death into your life. Hindi po ba nangyayari po sa atin to? When we reject God, when we put God on the side, parang may namamatay sa atin. Di ba? Plague number four, swarm of flies. Ito na, mga langaw. Tanong ko sa inyo, saan mo nakita ang mga langaw? Sige nga, di ba? Sa basura, sa may nabubulok, sa mga patay. So the flies coming now sa plague number four, God again is telling us that death is coming. Okay, pwede natin pag-usapan pa yung plague 5, 6, 7, 8, no? Pero talon tayo sa plague number 9 and this is unending darkness. Unending darkness ang na- plague number 9. Dumilim. Di ba? Nagkaroon ng eclipse daw. And dumilim buong, buong bayan ng, ng Egypt. Buong country ng Egypt. And going back to the first, first, Verse of Genesis 1. Anong sabi ng Diyos dun? Anong instruction ng Diyos? Nung ginawa niya nung kalikasan, anong sabi niya? Let there be light. O, oh, ba? Pero now, in plague number 9, God brought darkness. And the lesson here, dear friends, is that if you own, if you become your own God, your life goes very dark. If you reject God and become your own God, your life becomes very dark. Last. Last, as we continue, and I pray you seek the light always. Always seek the light, no matter where you are, no matter kung anong pinagdadaanan mo. Even if there's darkness in your life, seek the light, dear friends. Plague number 10, the death of the firstborn. Konting background lang po dito, no? Is that God looks upon the nation of Israel as His firstborn. Diba? Chosen nation niya ang bayang Israel and also his firstborn. And the nation of Israel has been suffering as slaves in Egypt for 440 years. Four centuries, mga kaibigan. And God was now sending the plagues because Pharaoh would not let them go. Pharaoh would not set them free. At anong ginawa na ni Pharaoh dahil sa sobrang inis niya na sa nine plagues na ito, he declared that the firstborn of Israel would be killed again. And siyempre, di ba? God also had to show and, sh- and share His power that He cannot allow this to happen again for the nation of Israel. And konting lesson dito, di ba? What we do in life comes around. Sabi nga nila, what goes around comes around. Kumbaga, for some of us, we can call this karma. Pero sa, sa atin, na naniniwala sa Diyos, it's not just karma. It's just how the world is designed. That what we give goes around. What we share comes around. And in God's perfect time, it will come back because God is in control. Pero dito sa plague number 10, all of the firstborn in Egypt will die. Why? Because God made Pharaoh taste his own evil. Na ito. Last straw. Na. Last straw ng Panginoon na ito. And this is, di ba? This is the last moment where makita natin that there's a huge difference talaga between Pharaoh's massacre and God's judgment kasi si Pharaoh was making himself God. And God's judgment, in fact, this is the last message for today as we talk about the plague number 10. Message number 4 is that God will always provide mercy. Why? Remember, si Pharaoh, without mercy, killed all the Hebrew boys and drowned them sa River Nile. Pero Yahweh allowed this plague number 10 to happen where all of the firstborn in Egypt would be killed by death. But even in His boundless mercy, sa sobrang lawak and infinite ang mercy ni Yahweh, He still provided a way to escape. Paano? Paano? God told Moses that anyone, anyone, whether you're Hebrew or Egyptian, whoever smears the blood of the lamb or of the goat on the doorposts of the house will be spared. Huh? And, and that was Moses' instruction sa lahat ng bayang Israel. Pero regardless kung he, Israel sila or Egyptian, they can put the blood of the lamb on their posts and they will be spared. Pero, siyempre si Pharaoh, di niya ginawa. He was still hard heart-hardened 
at this was the moment where the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites at ang tawag dito Passover at mga Hebreo, mga Israelita, mga Israelites, they still celebrate this Passover feast until now, remembering that night when the angel of death passed over their home because of the blood of the lamb that was put on their doorposts. But Pharaoh, if only he chose to trust God, kahit sa huling, huling hirit ni Lord na, he would have been saved. His firstborn also would have been saved. Dear friends, doesn't this give us Kumbaga, parang teaser ito sa mangyayari in the New Testament sa Gospel. Where the blood of the innocent Lamb, Jesus Christ, was shed on the cross for us. To save us from sin and death. Di po ba? Jesus is the Holy Lamb of God that saves everyone and anyone who trusts Him now. So dear friends, as we end our talk for today, put God's love on the doorposts of your heart. Put God's mercy on the doorposts of your heart today. Wag tayo mahiya. Wag natin isipin at wag tayo mag-focus sa sarili natin and just allow God to come into our lives and into our hearts today. We pray. Name the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat sa iyong pagmamahal at lubos at walang wakas na pag-ibig. Panginoon, Lord God, we're so thankful today that you're, you send your Son, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross and shed His blood for us so that we can put His sacrifice, His love upon the doorposts of our hearts today. And we thank you for the sacrifice of your Son through the Eucharist. Help us to experience Him more and more every day. And Lord Jesus, we lift up to you whatever is holding us back from loving you and receiving you and accepting you whole, wholeheartedly into our hearts. We pray na kami ay hindi uh, gagaya sa ginawa ni Pharaoh when he hardened his heart before you. Jesus, use us, flow through us. That way, we can become more like you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.